This conference will now be recorded. All right. So welcome everyone to our October 2022 Board of Trustees meeting. Good to see all of your faces this morning. Um, and so we'll just get right into it. Uh, go ahead, Tom, call the meeting to order. <clears throat> okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Jolene, we'll take the roll. Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Present. Adley Reader. Present. Baptist. I am here. Welcome. Baines. Here. Verandas. Verandas here. Thank you, Burns. Burns here. Burns present. Smith. Tom Smith. You just unmute there. Tom is here. Thank you. Okay. Move on to approval of the agenda. I'll move approval of the agenda. I have this. I'll second. Motion and second by Lee, by Abdis and Reader. Jolene, will you take the roll? Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert, I, Lee Reader. Aye. Lee Reader, I, Abdis. Aye. Abdis, I, Baines. Aye. Baines, I, Verandis. Aye, Verandis. Verandis, I, Burns. Aye. Burns, I, Smith. Aye. Smith, aye. And is approved. Thank you, Jolene. Tom, you want to do the uh, pledge? Let me give you the flag here first. <laughs> Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, at this time, I'll take over uh, item 1.5, any conflict of interest for any trustees on any items on the agenda. If you have any, please um, identify those now. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on. Um, item two, there are no scheduled presentations this morning. Item three, public comment. Um, the public's welcome to make comments on any items not on the agenda. Um, for which they would have three minutes to speak on those uh, comments. The board will receive them um, and listen, but there will be no back and forth um, for the, the item listed here. So if there's anyone from the public that would wish to speak now, you have an opportunity. Hearing no public comments, we'll move on to informational items, item 4.1. Um, general manager's report in the effort to, to save a little time this morning because I know there's a couple trustees that have some time commitments. Um, I have nothing to add aside from I've uh, been spending a lot of time this past month on the fee, the Foreign Atomas program and ballot um, for the trustee election and getting those materials out. I do believe that the trustee ballots will be placed in the mail today. If not, um, already last night. So they were printing the ballot and voter guide. And so those the trustee election ballots and voter guides should be arriving in um, our constituents mailboxes uh, as early as possibly tomorrow and um, by no later than early next week. So with that, I'll take any questions on the information provided in the GM's re report. Kevin, this is Chris. Uh, I just wanted to to uh, do a shout out to Jolene and Christina for all their hard work at the Pops in the Park. They did a great job representing the district. Um, the, all the stuff they ordered and were handing out that they took care of uh, was a big hit. Um, and in fact, I think Jolene, I think there's another event this weekend if, if uh, board members are interested. Uh, Jolene may have more information on the flood, the flood fair, I think, uh, down in Marina Park, but um, they, I just want to say they did a great job being the uh, forward-facing um, representatives for the district. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, there is a high water jamboree um, this weekend at Marina Park, and the district is going to have a booth. And so appreciate that, Chris. And I know you were at the Pops in the Park event as well. And so, yeah, Jolene and Christina, thank you so much for attending that and, and setting up for this coming weekend. 
Any other comments or questions on the GM report? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the operations manager's report. Um, unfortunately, Gabe's not joining us this morning. He, he took a little vacation uh, right before flood season kicks off. He's been working really hard. And so um, I'm happy to answer any questions on the ops report. I do wanna share with all of you that we did the Steelhead Creek cleanup in coordination with the Central Valley uh, Regional Water Quality Control Board um, this week. Um, the very first day, uh, which was Monday, we removed over 10,000 pounds of trash from one campsite on the Natomas East Main Drain, Steelhead Creek. And so we continued all the way through Thursday. Um, Gabe and Tony are gonna be working on um, getting all the, the stats and statistics and putting together a report that we'll be happy to share with you in November at our November board meeting on the success and results of that cleanup with pictures and and data about that cleanup. So that's, um, I think it's now our fourth year of doing that in concert with um, the Central Valley Regional Water Quality Control Board. It is successful, unfortunately, um, the stuff comes right back. And so there's a longer term um, issue that we need to correct. And we've been working with the city and county as well as you know statewide to try to, to fix this issue. Unfortunately, there's no immediate silver bullet for us but um we're, we're doing all that we can at this moment given the resources and tools we have um but we'll continue to push that forward because um you know ten thousand pounds just in one morning is um is just extreme but fortunately that debris was removed won't go down into the sacramento river and out to the bay uh when we get our first flush so want to just on record, thank Gabe and Tony for their work in, in the Central Valley Regional Water Quality Control Board and supporting this effort and, and providing other resources for us to do that cleanup. Any questions on, oh, and then other, the pictures here um, that Gabe provided, we did also do a cleanup on a Saturday. Um, the crews went out, we set up, Gabe, Gabe coordinated a cleanup with some Garden Highway residents and um, Sacramento pick it up. And we did a, a cleanup um, on Saturday. I think it was two Saturdays ago. And so, so the pictures in his report are just um, some of that effort and work in working in partnership with the community and removing the trash and debris along Garden Highway. So this is something that we've done for two years now. And we'll probably do it a, a little bit more, two or three more times. You can just see the amount of trash and debris that's being collected and we're hauling it off for them. And, just trying to be good partners in the community. Kevin, if I may, um, you know, this is an issue near and dear to my heart. Uh, I feel very strongly uh, about the need to address the issue of trash in our waterways, obviously from a water quality perspective. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad, you know, and uh, I want to applaud well, you and our staff, as well as the regional board that I also have the pleasure on serving on you know, for the cooperation. Um, I think it's what we can do now. I mean, obviously the root problem is, you know, the unhoused and that is not, not something that we're charged with, but, you know, I think keeping our water waterways clean um, is a priority as a community that we need to, we need to focus on. And so anything we can do to keep chipping away at and building an expectation of behavior uh, for folks um you know i think is a good thing so um good job and um yeah keep it up yeah thanks nick and and i want to commend our board um all of you for supporting us in this effort as well you know um it, like you said it's not our charge but i think we have a responsibility and um you know a commitment to our community to continue to provide you know these services and do our part as well to at least keep it at bay for now until we have some other tools that are more significant. But yeah, thanks, Nick. Hey, Kevin, this is Chris. I, I echo uh, Nick's um, comments. I just want to, is there a way to, to uh, notify us of, of these in the future? So if we uh, want to participate, because this probably wasn't too far from my place, I would, you know, it'd be great if there's, if would be happy to join in if that's, uh, you know, if you could let us know the ahead of time, if Gabe can send out a note or something, that'd be great. 
Yeah, Chris, absolutely. Um, that SAC picks it up, I believe, is the organization's name, and you can get onto their social pages or join up with them. They do it all the time, um, at least once or twice a month, I believe. But I'll send you the contact information, and it's not just on on our, you know, RD One Thousand. They work with other agencies as well, and so if people want to volunteer, maybe we. Um, start promoting that as well and just recognizing and get more volunteers out there through our, you know, modest um, social media presence at this point, but we can also promote that as well if that's something the Urbanization Committee wants us to do. Yeah, I just, I'd love to be out there with the staff uh, supporting them in, uh, in any way possible. Yep, absolutely. I'll let you know next time. This one was scheduled kind of last minute. Gabe got in contact with them and they were scheduling a cleanup and so we were able to help out. So that was really great because we hauled all the the um, the trash away and used our equipment, as you saw from the previous picture on the the backhoe and the clamshell. It really helps, you know. So you don't have to get your hands necessarily on stuff that may be in those bags. So yeah, great. We'll let you know, Chris, for sure. Kevin. Hey, Kevin. It, it's it, Ed Perez. I just wanted to add something real quick on this one. Okay. But yeah, uh, Sacramento picks it up. It actually has a great Facebook page, and um, they they did actually post a video of the event on Gordon Highway, and um, uh, definitely RD 1000s, you know, trucks and uh, equipment was very very instrumental. I, I think the photos don't do justice to the amount of trash you guys hold out. Um, <laughs> there was even an abandoned van in there, so. Um, so nice, nice to see already 1,000 there. Thank you, Ed. Any other comments or questions on the operations manager's report? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item 4.3, district council report. Scott, Rebecca are on the line and I'll turn it over to you. Scott and Rebecca probably should have coordinated who was gonna talk first, but Rebecca's <laughs> going to the majority of activities this month, so I'm gonna suggest you go. Know, all right. Uh, good morning. Uh, so as, as Kevin highlighted for you, um, big activities really are your upcoming election. Um, a reminder for folks who are either running or um, your, well, all of you who are running, really the whole board, uh, the election will be in early November, but we do manually count ballots um, through the RD's, um, the water codes process for elections. And so we won't have a, a result on election night, most likely. I wouldn't expect that to happen until, you know, up to a week after the election itself. We'll certainly, hopefully, be able to update you um, at your November board meeting about status. And you'll see notices from, um, from the district about when we've got a time to count ballots and, and the like. But in the meantime, please make sure um, you've got your ballot, send it on in and, and take care of it. And we'll look forward to a successful election. Thanks, Rebecca. And as I, I do want to note on the GM's report, or just to remind um, the trustees that our next board meeting is moved back one week due to Veterans Day. And um, but the the trustee election will be on November 8th. And hopefully, as Rebecca mentioned, we'll be able to get all the ballots counted. Last year, it took us a lot longer than we anticipated because we received over 4000 return ballots um, this year with all of our outreach and everything else and more presence would probably get um, more than, than uh, I said last year in 2020. Um, we'll probably receive more return mail-in ballots this time around. Fortunately, it's a parcel vote. So those go a little quicker. There's not as many votes as the assessment side and trying to do the math. So anyway, uh, November 18th is our next board of trustees meeting, but the trustee election is November 8th. Thanks, Rebecca. Scott, do you have anything to add? I'll only note that I've been providing some support to the district on issues of homelessness and also on issues of enforcement. And we'll talk about that a little bit during the closed session today. Thank you, Scott. Any questions for Scott or Rebecca? Hearing none, we'll move on to consent calendar items 5-1, 5-2, 5-3, 5-4, 5-6. 5, 5, and 5, 6. I would entertain a motion unless um, someone wants to pull one of those items. I entertain a motion for approval. I move to approve the consent calendar. 
Second, Burns. Motion by Lee Readers, second by Burns. Any public comment? Hearing none, Jolene, will you take a roll? Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert, I, Lee Reader. Aye. Lee Reader, I, Abdus. Aye. Abdus, I, Baines. Aye. Baines, I, Barandis. Aye. Barandis, I, Burns. Aye. Burns, I, Smith. Aye. Smith, I. Consent calendar is approved. Thank you, Jolene. Um, on to item 6.1 on our scheduled calendar, insurance renewal. Um, annually, the district um, goes through an insurance renewal process in this time frame, um, usually due by the end of October. Um, a little bit of a change this year. Um, our current insurance um, is going through recertification through the California Insurance Board and has not been approved yet. So there, we have to go to an alternative um, insurance provider, but still equally as good, same coverages, everything. Um, in fact, maybe better, but it's a joint um, powers of, it's a joint powers authority. So we'd be entering into a JPA for our insurance renewal this time, but it's only the, it's the only product available on the market for us at this time for what we need. The main point, and this was reviewed by the legal committee, um, what, two weeks ago now. Um, and so the only, the only downfall, and I don't know if it's really a downfall, is that we have to sign up for a minimum of a three-year term. And so this insurance renewal, which expires um, <laughs> uh, tomorrow, um, our current insurance expires tomorrow, we need to get this in today if approved. Otherwise, we'd be a little bit um, liability risk if not approved. But um, we have to, just so the board knows, we'll have to sign up for a three-year term. There are some exit clauses in the Joint Powers Authority. Um, if rates increase over 15% in any one year, we can petition to get out of the, the joint pool. Um, otherwise, things just move forward. The increase this year um, is consistent with what we budgeted, about 13% in our budget that we approved in July. Um, the first step, though, would be to get the agreement signed um, by the end of today and shipped off to our broker. We'll get enrolled. There's two different agreements we need to sign. We would get enrolled, and then there's a term because their renewal process for the joint pool um, is in April of every year. And so we'd have a, like a, was it four months, five month, six month lag. Um, and then we'd have to re up. So what we're asking for today is to um, authorize the general manager to execute the agreements necessary um, for signing up for our new insurance um, renewal process, join the joint powers of authority, and then also authorize me to execute the renewal in April of next year so that we don't have to have this back on the agenda. Um, and then so Jolene put together the staff report here and I think the, the terms and costs are listed in the financial impact. So prorated from October 15th through April 1st and then the additional amount would be 171 and that would take us from April of um, 2023 through April of 2024. I'd entertain or Jolene can help answer any questions um, if the trustees have any. This was the recommendation from the legal committee and advice of legal counsel that uh, it literally is the only product available on the market. Um, Scott and Rebecca, not to speak for you, but they felt inclined that the agreements were um, very well written, um, no changes, no substantial changes, if any, to the agreements that are shown in the attachments and um, their opinion was that it provided the same or better coverage than we, we have now. Kevin, I'll, I'll chime in on uh, the legal committee's discussion on this. Uh, we really don't have an option here, so uh, we can talk about the particulars, but there is no other option. We need this is can get uh, it's legally 
sufficient, provides adequate protection. Thank you, Nick. You're a little bit choppy, but I believe you're in support of that. And what we heard was that it's sufficient. There's no other options and it's um, good coverage for us and uh, really no risk. Right. This is Tom. I, <clears throat> I'd like to comment, you know, a lot of the legal committee, one of the things about many of these insurance JPA pools is that they have <clears throat> retained risk, which is additional exposure to the members. This is more like a group purchase. It's fully insured. There's no risk retention. So there's no potential for that down the road. The one, so the, if there's no additional risk for assessment, then the issue would be they'd have to raise rates. And of course they go more than 15%. We have the out. So we, felt that this was really, uh, there was no additional risk beyond what we have had in the past. Thank you, Tom. Any other questions or comments from trustees? Yeah, sorry, it was being, it was choppy there. I also moved to approve the staff recommendation on this. All right, I have a motion before we take a second. Is there any comment from the public on this item? Hearing none, we have a motion to approve by Trustee Abdus. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Lee Reader. Jolene, will you take roll? I will. Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert, aye, Lee Reader. Aye. Lee Reader, aye, Abdus. Did we lose him? I think it's an aye. He made the motion. So okay. I don't know, Scott, Rebecca, like, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Baines. Aye. Baines I. Brandis. Brandis I. Brandis I. Burns. Burns I. Burns I. Smith. I. Smith I. Thank you. Motion's approved. All right. Thank you. Motion's approved. Um, so Nick did just leave and now he's come back. So he, he has some connectivity issues. At this time, we're going to move. Well, sorry. Any comments or questions on item 7.1.1 legal committee or sorry, committee meeting reports. Um, we had two legal committees and the executive committee. Um, if there are no questions, we will or other trustees comments will move into closed session. Uh, this is Tom. Can I just ask quickly, is there a calendar? I see I'm on two committees and they didn't have any meetings last month, but I don't yeah, have the any. I don't have any of these on my calendar. Can right, the committee meetings are scheduled on an as-needed basis. There's no set calendar for them. Although we, there are um, some questions from or recommendations from other trustees to have at least quarterly meetings. The urbanization committee meeting um, does meet quarterly. That's the one that's pretty scheduled. But we, um, based on everyone's schedules, um, it's not something that we set on. The calendar to say the third Thursday of every month or every quarter. Um, so they're on an as needed basis, but at least quarterly we meet with urbanization, which is one of the committees I believe you were assigned to. Um, and so as those come up, I'll give you at least like two weeks advance notice to try to schedule something that works for everyone. Okay, thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Chris, did you, you queued up your mic? Did you have a... Uh, this was good. She's going to kill me, but I want to wish Jolene a happy birthday today. Thanks, Chris. Happy birthday. Happy All birthday. Right. At this time, we'll move into um, closed session. So members from the public, I would ask that you um, exit the meeting and we will then lock the meeting. You're welcome to rejoin with the same link. I, I think, Ed, you're the only one on here. Um, so if you leave and come back in like three minutes, you'll be placed into a waiting room. Um, so just log back into the same um, login if you want to hear the report out from closed session. Uh, well, thanks, Kevin. I, I think I'll just uh, bid farewell to the, to the board. <laughs> so good luck in your closed session. All right, Ed, have a great afternoon and good weekend. All right, Jolene, Christina, you guys can log off as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lock here, guys, and then I'll stop the recording when we're done. Okay, it shows we're locked. I'm gonna turn off the recording.
This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we're back from closed session, back to open session. Rebecca? Uh, good morning. We're uh, coming back out of closed session at 8.55 this morning. Uh, the board took no reportable actions in closed session. All right. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Motion by Gilbert, second by Lee Reader. Jolene, will you take roll? I will. Trustee Gilbert? Aye. Gilbert, aye. Lee Reader? Aye. Lee Reader, aye. Abdus? Aye. Abdus, aye. Baines? Aye. Baines, aye. Barandis? Barandis, aye. Barandis, aye. Burns? Aye. Burns, aye. Smith? Aye. Aye. Smith, aye. Thank you. It's approved. All right, meetings adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.